All right, I want to end this lecture by uh, discovering a formula together which is going to allow us to easily compute the distance between uh, a point, a random point in three space, and a plane of your choice. And so we're going to write down the equation for our plane like this. And we're going to let P1 be the random point that we're interested in. So I'll put that in red up here. Here's my P1 sitting there. And then I want P0 to just be some other random point on the plane. Turns out we won't need P0 in our formula, but we're going to start with it to try to figure out what's happening. So I want to begin by taking the normal vector for the plane, and we can put it uh, right there. So here's my normal vector n. By the way, it should be clear to you from our formula what n is. See if you can write down the component form of n. n is just a, b, and c. All right. And so now let's think together about how we can get the distance. So what we're looking for is this distance, the shortest distance from the point P1 down to the plane. So we'll go ahead and give this a name. We'll call this D. And looking at the picture here, it can be a little hard to see how to compute it. The key, it turns out, is to go ahead and visualize this as a vector, and we're going to call v the vector starting at p0 and ending at p1. And by the way, we can write down the component form of v. See if you can do that. Hopefully you can see that it's x1 minus x0, y1 minus y0, z1 minus z0. And now as we think about the distance that we want, hopefully you can visualize that, look, if I were to project V onto N, then all of a sudden, the length of that projection is exactly the distance that I want. My picture is a little bit off here. I'll fix it by erasing a few of those. There we go. Now my picture is perfect. Um, the length of the projection, right, we're going to project somewhere up here. The length of that projection is exactly the same as the distance that we want. And so that tells us how to go about looking for this formula. So let's see if we can figure it out together. So let's start by re recognizing that d, the distance that we're after, is the magnitude, the length of the vector projection of v onto the vector n. And so, right, this is just the uh, magnitude of the scalar component. It's, it's the absolute value of the scalar projection. So I'm going to write this as n dot v absolute value over the length of n. And it's tempting to stop here and say, well, that's a nice formula. Let's be done. But this formula, as we've written it, depends on this arbitrary point p naught. And I want to see if we can somehow get rid of p naught in our equation and just have the equation of our plane and the equation or the uh, point p1, our point of interest. It'd be nice if we could not have to have a random point on the plane. So let's see what happens. Let's work it out. So when we begin plugging everything in, I get the absolute value of what? A times uh, x1 minus x0. I'm just taking that dot product upstairs. B times y1 minus y0 plus c times z1 minus z0. And then I'm going to divide everything by the square root of a squared plus b squared plus c squared. So that's my first step. Next, I want to go ahead and distribute the a and the b and the c and group everything. I want to group everything by the ones, x1, y1, z1, and then the knots. So when we do that, we're going to get something that looks like this. So absolute value, a x1 plus b y1 plus c z1. That's the first part minus parenthesis a x naught plus b y naught plus c z naught. That's a c, not a parenthesis. And then we'll close parenthesis. Absolute value all over. Uh, I'm just going to copy it all over the square root that we just wrote down. All right. So that's that. Now, at this point, here's where the magic happens. Think about where x0, y0, z0 lives. This is a point on the plane. And so this point satisfies the equation of the plane. So look up with me. When you plug in x0, y0, and z0, 
into this formula, you're always going to get out d. And so that means because x not y not z not lies on the plane, it fits the formula, and so this is just d. And so I can write this thing, I can simplify this as ax1 plus by1 plus cz1 minus d all over the radical of uh, a squared plus b squared plus c squared. I should have just left that as length of n just to keep it simpler. So that's the formula we're going to use. Now, I do want to mention to you that some books do it differently. If you were to write your plane as ax plus by plus cz plus d equals zero, if you were to put it over here, then you would actually have a plus d right there instead of a negative. I chose to keep it the same, ax plus P, by plus cz equals d. And as a result, I have, whoops, I need to switch erasers here. I have uh, a negative d sitting there. So that's the formula that we're going to use. That's a little different than the book because the book has you get everything equal to zero, whereas I had you write it down um, the way that we typically would. So to me, that's a little bit easier. So uh, just keep track of that. And as long as you're careful, everything works out well. So that's a formula. So this is the distance formula for the distance between a point x1, y1, z1, and a plane ax plus by plus cz equals d. And that's how you do it. So let's do an example. So we want to find the distance between this plane and this point. So quite literally, I'm just going to plug everything into the formula. And so let's make sure that we're clear on what the normal vector is. So n for my vector is what? 3, 2, and 1. That's my a, b, and c. Uh, and then you can see that my d here is just 1. And so the distance big D is going to be what? Well, let's work it out. So it's, it's uh, here, there. I can have the formula on the screen at the same time. So I'll slide this up, and then we can compute it. So it's going to be the absolute value of a, which was 3 times x1, so 3 times negative 3, plus 2 times negative 1, plus 1 times 0, all right? And then you're going to have minus d, so minus 1, all over the length of n, which is going to be what? The length of 9 plus 4 plus 1, so root 14. So I just end up with um, negative 9, absolute value of negative 9, minus 2, minus 1, uh, absolute value over square root of 14. So this is exactly 12 over the square root of 14. That's the distance between this point and this plane, just using a formula. All right, I'll end with two quick remarks. So sometimes you'll be asked to find the distance between two planes. These planes are perhaps parallel. Uh, in fact, they will be parallel if you want to find the distance between them. So what I want you to do is just pick any point on one of the planes and then use the previous formula with the other plane. So you've got these two planes. Pick a random point there, your choice. That's your point, and then use that formula with the distance to this plane. And then other things that I want to mention is, going back to our conversation about planes in general, Please realize that when you're working in three space, equations of this form or this form, these are planes, and you can actually write down the normal vector in this case. Here the normal vector is, hopefully you can see it, 2, 1, 0. There the normal vector is, what, 1, 0, 0. So everything still applies, uh, even though these somehow seem like lines in two space. They are lines in two space. They're planes in three space. Same formulas work though as far as normal vectors go. Alright, great job. You finished 10.5. Way to go.